have Kevin, one of our favorite Moxie couples. Alex could not be here because he's still working. But, uh, you know, Kevin, you were the wedding planner behind it all. Like I read through your questionnaire and I feel like I, I have no doubt that you're an incredible actor, but I feel like you may have missed your calling because <laughs> I would snatch you up in a heartbeat. <laughs> as Honestly, my wedding going planner. Through, like going through the entire process, I was like, I mean, maybe I just have a second career here. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you were so it. organized. Yeah, when you're DIYing, you kind of have to be. And I mean, we were DIYing like almost everything. So we luckily, we were engaged for over two years. So we had a lot of time to think and plan. And I had very clear ideas of what I wanted. Um, so like from the beginning, we just started tracking things with spreadsheets and lists and, and all that. And um you know, I, we we had a wedding, a day of coordinator, um, just because I knew, like, we needed someone to help us on the day of. And I actually, I went into Canva and I made mock-ups of, like, every single thing, um, like, what our tables should look like, what our ceremony site was going to look like, uh, you know, all the different stuff. And, like, hand added, like, each individual element to make it look as close to the thing as possible and, like, put it all on a slideshow to send to them so they could have it as a reference on the day of, even though we were also going to be there for, like, half the day setting up anyways, but <laughs> yeah, I like to have a little bit of control over things. <laughs> it turned, like, I was shook when I saw those photos, like, sometimes there's photos that, like, like, I'll have this, like, weird sensation of feeling, like, threatened a little bit, like, <laughs> saw your arch and I was like I think he, he did better than what I what I could do so, I'm coming for your gig Amy <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what made you decide to DIY your flowers what, what led to that decision um we pretty early on knew that most if not all of our wedding was going to be DIY um and I'm the kind of person I'm sure you're familiar like when I try out a new skill, I want to be perfect at it right away. <laughs> and if I'm not, I'm not interested, but like others have told me, and I would say myself, like, I'm pretty good at picking things up quickly. Um, so I was like, this feels like something that I could do myself, um, you know, with the help of others around, but like, I feel like I could take on this task and, and, um, be successful at it and it definitely helped us save quite a bit of money from what we would have paid like a local florist um, which was a big thing for us because we didn't have a huge budget we were paying for most of it ourselves um, so you know it was going to be a, a make it work situation either way yeah and, and you you built the arrangements that are sitting behind you I yeah. did, yeah. I went to oh, um so good, Kevin. <laughs> thanks. I tried two different things. So this was a new thing for me. I actually used a pin frog. Ooh. Uh, oh which I had never gosh. done before. And I tried to do like different clusters of flowers. So these are these butterfly ranunculus oh, are good. Come on. Where did you find and, like you're in New York City, so I'm I'm in Providence, actually. Providence, Rhode Island. Well, that's right. Okay. Yeah. I just read that. I was I was a New Yorker, but that's um, right. but yeah and then you know that one too just figured I'd whip something up today to set the scene oh my gosh so good but that's so also like this is also like hours and hours that you don't see of like right? me trying things and all going wrong and scrapping everything and then trying again and so I mean not this particular one this only took maybe 45 minutes of primping so you spent around a thousand dollars and then you got some stuff locally. Um, and what all did you make with that? Um, so we made, like you made a lot of things. Yeah. We made 15 centerpieces, um, like low compotes. Um, we made two bigger, um, like that's actually bigger than that, but, um, uh, they were aisle arrangements, which then got repurposed on our bar. Perfect. Um, we had um, five wedding party bouquets for all of our groomsmaids, um, two posies for each of our parents, um, seven or eight boutonnieres, 
and then our arbor of course the um, arbor. Oh. it was the thing i was most proud of you should be <laughs> so good what yeah. was the, what was the easiest thing for you to build and what felt the most challenging oh gosh um easiest thing hmm. uh, definitely the boutonnieres i think were like those I had practiced a few times with, you know, just grocery store flowers and um, sort of got the hang of that pretty quickly. Yeah. Also, the centerpieces, um, because I, I, I took a few days to do them, like I did, I spent one night with just our greenery, um, just like a greening each of those um, and sort of doing it like my own assembly line. Like I just set up as many with the compost as I could and did all the greens in one, all the greens in another. And then the same with the flowers. Like then I did all my roses in each and then I did all my dollars in each. Um, so in that sense, like that wasn't too daunting. Um, the arbor was for sure like the most stressful thing for me. Cause you uh, did that on site. Like you, yeah. didn't, you didn't like build out the cage at home and then take it and try to retrofit. I think it's, I feel like it always looks the best when it's built on site, but that's not always like a fit for a DIY, you know, situation, but yeah. it's like if you can, then you can really like get that movement that you want, you know? Yeah. Well, I think especially too, because we were, you know, we were two grooms, so we weren't spending all day in hair and makeup and, you know, we didn't have like a huge party that had to get ready. Um, so we were able to be on site. We were able to be there at 10 o'clock the morning of, um, that was our, also like a big part of our plan. Um, and it was really important to Alex too, that like us and our, our wedding party and their SOs and family, like whoever could be there to all help and sort of put the wedding up together. Um, that was really important. So we luckily had like a good chunk of time the morning of where we could get everything started down in the pavilion. And then I was like, I'm gonna head up to the Arbor and just start working. And then yeah. whoever wants to come and hand me things can. <laughs> It's Whoever like, wants to feed me. It's true. Cause like even someone just bringing you water or handing you things, it really makes the process go faster because a lot of times like my friends will say, well, can I come help? And I'm like, oh, it's okay. I got it. But it's like, oh my gosh, that's so much easier if you have that extra person just like, yeah, handing you roses, handing you ruscus. So I saw in your question here, you had some ruscus drama. Can you? <laughs> ruscus. I love that. You're like, why can't? my ruscus I was like I have been there <laughs> oh that was the drama of the day um, <laughs> so our um uh, we had a hotel that was like 15 minutes away from our ceremony um and we brought everything up the day before um so all of our like the centerpieces were already done um but then we had like a lot of loose flowers and stuff that was going to be used for the arbor and in transporting everything from the hotel room to the cars to the venue, somehow our bucket of ruscus just got like left on the sidewalk. Um, and partly because I wasn't overseeing everything. <laughs> See, when people try and help, no. Um, <laughs> but so we we started setting stuff up. We get to the arbor. I'm like, okay, first thing I have to do is like the base greenery, which was the Smilax and the ruscus. Um, and the ruscus was nowhere to be found. <laughs> And I mean, we had people searching every inch of that venue, like behind doors that no one had been in, like yeah. under trees, behind bushes in every single car. Um, and I was like, whatever, I'd have to make it work. Um, so I started just sticking whatever stuff in that I could. Uh, and then <laughs> honestly, I thought about like, cause I mean, there were woods all around us. I was like, I will go and cut stuff down if I That's, have to. Yeah, I've had to do that in a pinch. Yeah. Ditch yep. diving is what I call it. Yep. Yeah, but luckily um, we got, uh, Alex got a picture, a text message from um, one of his uh, close family members and was like, does this belong to you? We saw this like sort of off to the side of the sidewalk in front of the hotel and we figured it was probably yours. <laughs> and so they drove it over, saved the day, all the ruscus got into the arbor and That's that so was like the biggest snafu of the day. So if that was it, then- If that was it, then you did really good. Yeah. And where did you get your inspiration from? Because I just, I loved, I love the oranges. I love that it had, yeah. Tell me like in your words, what, what your inspiration was. Cause I want to like run off with mine. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The inspiration kind of was just like new England in the fall. 
um i've always for years i've been saying like when i get married it's gonna be greens and like sort of rust and orangey and all earthy tones um so that was really the color palette that we went with um and i wanted it to just kind of be like i didn't want anything um you know too structured or too um you know too pulled in or too close together i wanted it all kind of like free and flowy and um and that was what i went i just started like taking stuff and sticking it in and then like stepping back and being like oh that that's an empty spot right there let's fill that in and did you find like about how long did the arch take you um i would say you from two starting... cages two big fatty cages yeah okay. um yeah we had two yeah two on like the top sort of corner and then one on the other side for the swag um i would say it was probably like a max of two hours okay. i want to say and that was from like you know getting everything up there putting the stuff up um taking a, a break to take one bite of a sandwich that i could not eat because i was so nervous, I'm nervous. yeah <laughs> like, people tell I you to take eat, one you're more like bite i want it. to but i just can't and it tastes like cardboard it's like yep. you can't yeah yeah i i felt bad because my one of my groomsmaids my best friend sarah had gone out to panera um and got lunch for us and brought it over <laughs> funny little um side note uh i was in her wedding in july and um i was the only guy in the bridal party so like as they were all getting ready i was out at the tent of course overseeing everything like helping get all the stuff together and her sister was ordering panera panera for lunch and somehow my order did not make it <laughs> so basically the entire day of her wedding like i didn't have any food until the reception so she was very diligent about like making sure that i had food on our wedding day and i took one bite of the sandwich and i was like i'm gonna bomb i can't i can't do this <laughs> but i felt bad so i was like i'll take I was, i'll take it back and i'll eat it in the room when we're getting ready and then it ended up on um the vanity in our bathroom and then it somehow ended up inside the sink so there was like a panera veggie sandwich just in our bathroom oh, sink as we were getting <laughs> You knew you weren't eating that bitch when you took it back, didn't oh, you? Oh, absolutely. You were just being nice. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. And so did you find the arch really hard? I mean, I know it was stressful with the ruscus, but I always feel like people are really intimidated with big things because they're big, but I find those, like, I just don't feel like you can screw it up too easily. I don't know. Yeah, do you I feel that way? I, or? I was so intimidated going into it. And then after it was done, I was like... It was kind of easy. Like I could do that again. <laughs> it was much easier than trying to put the bouquets together. That's for sure. Yeah. And um, bouquets the same way. Like people get really intimidated and I'm just like, oh, just pinch together some, some weeds and you got it. Yeah. Like, just make it look good. <laughs> it's easy. <yeah. laughs> you did such a good job. And did you get a custom design or did you get a package or make your own? Um, it was a total make my own. Really? I was like, this looks good. I like this. So did you recipe things out yourself? Um, yes, recipe. <laughs> I kind of... <laughs> that word loosely, it's okay. As with my cooking, I kind of just made stuff up as I went along. That's awesome. And yeah. did you feel like you ran out of anything or had too much? Like, were you like... Okay, so how did you... Like, did you... Because I, I think I have a guide of like how much, how far something goes. Did you utilize that? Or did you just kind of know, like, based on that bunch, I probably need 10? Yeah, I kind of just eyeballed a lot of it, which is probably not the most helpful thing to hear, but. <laughs> yeah, no, um, it's, I love it. Yeah, and I also, like, I brought extra, um, like, vases, bud vases and stuff, because I had a feeling we would have some extra. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, we can just, fill stuff up and stick things around where we don't have plans for things and um yeah yeah did you find the overall process like would you do it again would you recommend it and if you did recommend it what would your caveats be I would do it all again in a heartbeat nice. uh like I said to Alex I was like can we have a vow renewal on our first anniversary and just have it as another wedding yeah <laughs> it was just like I'm the kind of person that just loves planning things and 
Um, like I love working with my hands. I, I made our wedding cake. I designed like all of our signage, um, every detail, basically. I was like, I had a hand in everything and I just loved it so much. And I just wanted to do it again because the day was so perfect. That's amazing. Um, so what was your favorite flower that you worked with? And then was there one that you're like, I hated that one? Like, did you have one that you hated? Honestly, the, the quicksand roses were like, just to die for. You had really good ones. <laughs> they were so they, beautiful. They, they like blow out 90% of the time. Every once in a while, you'll get some that like, you're like, what happened? Like, were you cut too soon? But most of the time, they'll always get like, nice and fatty and the colors start changing as they open and yeah yeah they were they were just gorgeous every time alex like came in and looked at them and he was like he was like those are just they're just perfect um i kind of had an idea of like what kind of stuff was going to be hardy yeah um and like we did a lot of greenery for that reason just because we weren't sure like in our planning uh our venue was an hour from where we live so it's like, if we aren't able to like, you know, sort of store the stuff somewhere, like if we can't get into our hotel room before we go to our rehearsal luncheon and if they have to like, God forbid, sit in the car, like we wanted stuff that we knew was going to be okay. So we didn't have anything that was too delicate, um, except for like some, we bought, bought gorgeous orange ranunculus from a, a place near us. Yeah. Um, but I, I picked those up like the day before. Um, had like a special um like shaker bottle that could sit in my cup holder in my car so yeah. they were right there next to me <laughs> as i was driving they immediately went into the fridge in our hotel room like um those were the ones i was most careful with but yeah everything else was like pretty hefty and and resilient so so with building all of that stuff, how many helpers did you have actually helping you build and, or was it mainly like the transportation and setup? Um, building, I did the centerpieces entirely on my own. Um, the two aisle pieces, um, Alex insisted on me getting some help because he knows me and he knows how I can be. <laughs> um, but I was like, it can't be just anyone. It has to be someone we trust. So um, one of his groomsmaids, uh, who has like impeccable style and is really good with crafty things too, um, she came over and helped uh, two nights before the wedding. So we each worked on the two aisle pieces. Okay. Um, and I sort of like, you know, with all my expertise, coached her yeah. um, <laughs> through like working on that. Um, the All the bouquets I did myself, the boutonnieres I did all myself. Um, and then the Arbor, um, was sort of like a team effort, but that was mostly like, I was asking people like, can you cut a bit of this and hand it to me? Or like, can you, you know, um, but then eventually once we were getting into a time crunch, uh, Alex and my other groomsmaid, Hannah, um, I was like, just take stuff and stuff it in, make it look nice. Yeah. You're like, just, just, just keep, just keep stuffing. I need to walk away at this point. Yep. Well, what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about doing it or, you know, mulling it around? Like, what would you tell them if they're like, I want to do what you did? Um, I would say practice, practice, practice. Um, like just go to the grocery store and buy flowers and, and just like play with things and see what you like. And, um, I, I watched a lot of videos, like hours and hours of videos of all different things um just to you know sort of get different perspectives and different ideas and like find what works for people and you know it may not work for you but it may inspire some other sort of idea mm -hmm. um and really just plan and, and be organized and make lists and checklists and um i mean we made a checklist of like every single possible item we could need from like down to a ball of twine and a pair of scissors and like stakes to go in the ground in case you know something was wobbly um just think through like every scenario when you have the time you know in your entire wedding planning process <laughs> um, while you're making that cake <laughs> yeah no that's that's so um 
I think that's the most important part. And that's always the challenging aspect of owning Flower Moxie is I, I feel like some people will hop on the site and see like a pretty package and they're like, oh yeah, that's what I want. And they order it and then they never think about it again until they get their flowers. And it's like, this is a real job. And I think you had said that you had looked at different, you know, florists in your area and they had like a $5,000, $7,000 minimum. Um, so that was part of deciding that it might not be a fit for you, but it's like, they're charging that much because there's so much work that goes into it. The the flowers are expensive. Like I can see from the outside. And I remember being a florist, it felt like I was charging a lot, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, you have to be very organized, bring all the things, have those checklists. And that's what makes it a successful DIY, which is why yours was so absolutely stunning. So that you put into it, like it shows. Well, yeah, going off that, like you're not just paying for the flowers when you hire someone. You're you're paying for their knowledge and their expertise and their experience and like, you know, all of that stuff has to be taken into account too. So Yeah. What was the mechanics that you used? Did you use foam, chicken wire, a little bit of both? Um, a little bit of both. I used foam in the um centerpieces just because I felt like that was gonna be sort of the easiest thing for me as, as a novice, yeah. um, which I discovered like, yeah, it was, it was easy, but then also like if you get finicky with things and you decide to take something out and move it, um, when you're using foam, you have then like left a big hole there. So <laughs> you're pretty like decisive when you're doing things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So foam in the centerpieces, chicken wire in the larger, um, the larger arrangements, um, for the bouquets they're all hand tied is that that's the correct term right yeah did you uh, lay them down or did you spiral them or just kind of x-axis or um i tried spiraling initially and it wasn't working for me with what i was trying to get so then i did the like x-axis just sort of laying down and then like picking it up looking in the mirror and adjusting things and then i tied them off with um with zip ties and put ribbon around it they were gorgeous. Yeah, thank you. And then and then the arbor was the foam cages. Yeah. Yeah, I try to like, I feel like this point, I'm like 85, 90% foam free, but some stuff I just haven't been able to find something that works better. You know, mm-hmm. so I keep trying different things out, but that foam just kind of holds on. And especially when you're a new florist and you're just learning, it's kind of the best thing to learn on because there's there's a bit of a learning curve with chicken wire you know like it's nice yeah. then like it's nice because you can remove something and you don't leave like a gaping hole in the foam mm-hmm. and you can kind of like move it around but um there is something nice about foam you know exactly where it's going and it won't slip around on you so yep well, any other thoughts of like regrets or things that you wish that you did? The one thing I didn't get to do was put flowers on the cake, which was something I really wanted to do. Um, so we actually, I made a dummy cake. Um, so it was all styrofoam on the inside. Yes. And then I cut out just like a little section to put some real cake in for us to cut. But then I made um, sheet cakes for all the guest pieces because that was just going to be good. easier it's, oh my God, a million times easier to do that. Um, so I had like done a basic decoration on the dummy cake, um, but I wanted to get in and put some fresh flowers on the day of, and I just ran out of time. So I regret not doing that, but it was still <laughs> beautiful. So I don't was care. There, did someone else do it or did you just not have the flowers on the cake? No, we just didn't have them. But we had we had a pretty stand that had like a gold hoop around it um and um we got like some smile x on that yeah so it still had greenery around it it's like you're never gonna get everything done like I remember after my wedding I was like I was like I didn't even get the flower girls baskets with petals or maybe I did you know like there will always be those little things and at the end of the day it's just that quirky thing that you remember but it didn't really matter it just yeah (laughs) yeah well everyone I said that to was like what are you talking about the cake's not done it's it's beautiful like you absolutely did it I was like I know but not you're not seeing it the way I saw it in my head 
Well, thank you so much for, you know, hopping on with me and um, just ex walking me through that beautiful day and sharing your photos. I know this is going to be so helpful to all the couples just seeing what you were able to do and hear how you did it. And that's always just so nice because I think it's easy to see a picture and think that there was like a ton of people and aunties and, you know, semi-professionals working on it. And you were just brand new and you sat and, you know, took the time to educate yourself and get organized. And it shows, I mean, I can look at an event immediately and know who did their homework and who didn't. Yeah. When I saw that. I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me, Jess? And yeah, we're big fans here of, oh. of you and Alex. And thank, thank you so much. Well, the feeling is mutual. And I, I mean, I could, as any of my friends or new people that I've met recently will tell you, like, I could sit and talk about my wedding all day. So cool. thank well, you for giving me a chance to do that. <laughs>